sicker and worse all the time. And, um, I don't know if we didn't have the hope of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have that, uh, that upward bound. That we're going. I don't know where we'd be. We'd be lost. Any prayer requests? Um, my friend Mary, her daughter has a rare disease and she's getting worse. Um, Bria Davis is her name, so B R I A. And um, she wants us to pray for her. Thank you. Any others? I have a real good friend, and it's her son. Trevor, and well, he's my friend, and um, it's his health, and he needs guidance. Um, he's in the bodybuilding, and um, it's taken a toll on his body. He's been in the emergency room, and, and he just he needs help. He needs prayer. Mm -hmm. And then my mom, she's doing really good, oh, cool. so she could get off the prayer list. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's doing she's doing good. Thank she, you. Awesome. Yeah. She's had physical therapy, and, mm -hmm. and they've been in two or three times a week. And she's standing, she's walking with a walker, mm -hmm. a little bit, a little bit at a time, but the pain's gone. Where did we have her on the last year? Oh, 
hope she's there somewhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so. Do we have Luann? She was kind of ill. I, I haven't talked to her since Friday. I'll probably talk to her. Well, Don asked if we yeah. maybe put her on the well, list. Well, I don't print. This is kind of crazy. I didn't want her on the list. What? We didn't want her on the list. Well, yeah. our list, we could put yeah. her on. Yeah. yeah, he didn't want her on the printed list. Yeah, I know. That's okay. I'll talk to her. Pray for the Holy Spirit to work in our community and our church. Pray for our church school. Mm -hmm. Just what a, what a tremendous blessing it is. I got to visit with a few parents today. They're going to pick up their kids. And all, all the parents that I talked to said their kids were so happy that school was going on and they were so glad <laughs> to go back good. to school. My granddaughter's happy that school's mm -hmm. back in. I know my daughter was over today. She told me uh, the oldest granddaughter, uh, she was failing last year because she couldn't go to school. She pulled it straight A's. Now she's so happy. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, she loves being back to school. Just I'm glad to be back. It's so hard on the kids when it's. Uh, we want to pray for our, our leaders. Is Ron DeFluter doing better? Uh, I haven't heard anything lately, but uh, uh, usually let's get over for something big going on. So. But Jennifer's, Jennifer's doing okay. Yep, she's So we can maybe we can take Jennifer up and just keep her Yeah, home. Jennifer's doing okay. Yeah. Keep your pastors in prayer. We're, we're busy trying to uh, adjust to our new schedule. You haven't seen me in a little while at church here, but when you do see me, you'll see me for several weeks out of, out of a few. So just like you're seeing, Marvin is bouncing back and forth between the two, and then the next next one, I'll, either I'll be bouncing back and forth between the two. Or, or so Spearfish isn't open? No. It is, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and between, between the other two. So I'm up at Spearfish, and I've been up there from September. It's been my month up there. And I'll move on to, I think, Rapid is my is next her one. They're like open? five weeks out of seven. Is her mouth so open now? Yep, yep. Okay. Our are has been helping out at Hot Springs, too. Uh, down Hot Springs or Hermosa? Oh, you said Hot Springs. Who? Marvie. Oh, yeah, I'm not aware of that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, you said that when he was sitting here slow, I don't try to. Really? Okay. So, so uh, Bonnie Schmidt and sister, her sister. I, I talked to Bonnie. She said her sister was doing better. Guess I can ask her. Yeah, better ask her. Don's surgery has been. Up till sixth uh, of October. Sixth of October. Because there was a baby in the surgical team got COVID. So we had to do that. Rhonda, <laughs> you still want your daughter Tracy and her friend Pam on? Yeah, keep Pam on. She just, yeah, she just, oh, she just yep. can't seem to shake. Yeah. So Tracy and, yeah, is it? And I think, um, yeah, keep Tracy on, especially for healing with your children. Okay. That's, yeah. You know, there's, so, there's just no end to, yeah. to prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. We haven't seen Shirley Huntley lately. Well, we should think about them. I think Mary Islands that they're evacuating because of the volcano too. They evacuated the whole island. Oh, Mary Island. Yeah, tonight they had it on there and that it's less than a mile from the sea now and when it hits there they said that's where the fumes will kill people. Oh uh, yeah. There's several already dead. Thousands of homes have already burned from the lava. Where is that, you know? 
I don't, I don't know. Building on top. Yeah, but where are they? I don't know. It's on the ring of fire. Kind of like Mount St. Helens. People yeah, built yeah. on it, knowing that it was a active volcano, but just okay. not, just not active like they think active. Yeah. Yeah. So is it on by Australia? Is it? Yeah. Along here. I know there was a no, the Canary Islands are Africa. by Spain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's coming coming our way from Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of off Spain and off yeah. Africa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. called the Spanish Islands, the Spanish Canary Islands. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They're out there a ways. And it's flooding east and south again. And they had Earthquakes, California. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God that the sequoias are okay. Australia, right. Australia did have an earthquake. Though. Yeah. yeah, they did too. Wave any in Tristan? Do you know anything about them? Tristan and Wavy? Well, I have I've heard. not heard, but I'm assuming they're, well, they should be past everything. They've oh, been, yeah, they're past. Yeah. Have they been back in Tristan? No, they haven't been back since then. I'm sure they're waiting until they well, I, you know, I don't know some people, it hits kind of hard, because I know uh, there's several... And it lingers. Yeah, there's several people that just, you know, they, well, it's like getting out of the hospital. It takes several weeks to really get your off. energy back. My friend Mary that's on the list, she was going to come here for our reunion for high school, but she called me and she said that she's still not feeling up to par, she can't drive because she's dizzy. Yeah. So, she well, had codes. Well, health concerns. So. But we could pray for hours and hours. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Well, and that's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, day by day and go through your list. And, uh, the list just gets, keeps getting longer. Oh, yeah. and, 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 and so we keep them in a book, just, just like mm -hmm. the Lamb keeps a book of life. So that's that's what we're praying for that list of list of names and situations in our book. And if we commit all this to human memory, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, I think we one. Really? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, because every time I I edit the purpose, I put a new date on it, so each one saves. Okay. Well, we can probably look at we can probably look at some answers to prayers. Yeah, quite a few. Some praises somewhere along the line. Well, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. We'll start our study, and we're still on lesson four, I think. And page thirty-four. Kind and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another day, another day to study your word. We pray for the Holy Spirit to join us as we. Uh, Endeavor to find out more about you. Uh, Lord, you have heard our uh, petitions for prayer. Uh, Lord, we sang about uh, standing on higher ground, and that's what we're looking for tonight. And as we stand on that higher ground, and we, we, we pray for people who need that higher ground, uh, both physically and spiritually and emotionally. Uh, Lord, there are those who are struggling uh, financially. I, thankful for a church that helps people with the pantry and, and in other ways. Uh, Lord, there's just there's just no end to what we can pray for. And so you have many people praying. And so this little group wants to lift up these situations, the people in our book, and those who haven't been here in a while, and those who haven't been to church in a little bit, with a, another wave of uh, COVID variant going through and some people are affected and some people are not. We're just uh, Lord, help us to navigate through the, the, the uh, perilous times that we're living in. And may the information that we gain, glean tonight and help us to encourage not only us but uh, others that we come in contact. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are on page 34, starting. So the last time we got together, we were talking about uh, the purposes of the feast, the purpose of the feasts, and uh, how.
how they were, they commemorated something, they educated them about something, and they also were predictive. And, and uh, so what we're going to study tonight is the predictive element of the feeds. And so um, that would be the predictive or the prophetic uh, element that, um, you know, these feasts were just not random holidays that God said they needed a day off, you know, from work or whatever. These were things that were pointing as a prediction or as a prophecy towards something in the uh, redemptive work of Christ. There's a, and, and, and if you if you separate out the festival from Christ's uh, ministration, you've missed it. And you you may wonder why you know uh, the Jewish people missed it because they separated out the, the work of the coming Messiah and and they they just missed it and then they and they put all of their uh, trust in the ritual. Uh, can you think of an example today of a, of a religious organization that puts all of its trust into the ritual rather than in the, the substance, which is Christ? Yes, maybe. Yeah, the Catholic Church, and they, they hold up the Eucharist, and they, and they claim that to be the body of Christ. And so the, the, priest, um, the priest has the power uh, by his authority to, to call Christ into that Eucharist. And then it transubstantiates into the body of Christ as you partake. And so if they don't do that ritual, you don't get Christ. If you don't partake of the Eucharist, you have no part in Christ. My stepdad used to say, I don't want to be a cannibal. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's kind of confusing for folks. Some, some folks, they can't get, get over the hump because they've, they've had it drilled into them that this is the flesh of Christ. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of it representing the flesh of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, John chapter 6 the, the Jews had a really difficult time. In John chapter 6, he says, you know, I am the bread of life. You know, and, and hello, hello. The, the people thought that when, when the, the bread was falling from heaven, they said, you know, Moses, he had the manna. And, uh, and uh, Jesus said, I am the bread from heaven. And unless you take my flesh and drink my blood, right, you, 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 you have no part in the kingdom. So we're on page 34 in the lesson. <laughs> welcome, welcome. That's right. He <coughs> said, <Sit> still. <coughs> I don't have the right page book anyway. Oh. She's going to go. We're going to get you one. No, I might, I might have. Oh. No, <laughs> just no. We're, we're, we'll get you. We got extras. No, I. I got one last time. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you I can just read didn't from bring it. You can read yeah, from you it. You didn't get the new parts that were in. No. Uh, yeah, can, she gave us new ones. You can read read from it and, and leave it for the next person that comes. So well, that's okay. So we we were talking about the predictive element of the feasts or the prophetic. And how, if we're if we're not careful, we 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 tend to emphasize the the ritual or the or the temporal. And we were talking about how the Catholics in the in the Eucharist, right, is presented as the flesh of Christ, and the wine as the blood, and that transubstantiary power that the priest has to call on Christ and to invoke Him into that service um, when it's meant to be uh, as a token or as a symbol of which Christ is the substance of. 
And so they put all their emphasis there. And so uh, the, the Jews of Jesus' day, they were confused when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. If you don't, you have no part. You know, um, and so they said, how can we eat your flesh? And if we did, there's not enough of you to go around. They just couldn't get over the hump. And, uh, and so they couldn't understand it. And that, that passage there in John chapter 6, when you read it, that's when a lot of people left. They said it's too hard to understand. And, and I think when, when uh, the, the Jews uh, missed that and all their emphasis is on the festivals and all their emphasis on, on keeping the, the feasts, they, they were missing what the feasts they were, they were more interested in what it commemorated and, and maybe the lesson that it taught, but they, but they missed how it talked prophetically about some, uh, as the lesson points out, key phase of Christ's redemptive work. So every one of these festivals has a, a, a part to teach us, but to emphasize Christ's work. So number one, there that it talks um, uh, about uh, the Passover. Okay, um, I wonder if uh, you got your Bible with you. We can look up First Corinthians five seven. And I think that's going to tell us that Christ is our Passover. Right, First Corinthians five seven. Yeah, and so um, the Passover sacrifice was the innocent lamb that was slain, right? And the antitype was in Christ's sacrifice. And so somebody that's got First Corinthians five seven, go ahead and read that. Turn chapter four, the eleven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Okay. So, in Paul's mind, he was saying that Christ is our what? Our sacrifice. Okay, yeah, our sacrifice. He says, in fact, He's the Passover sacrifice. The Passover pointed to Jesus. Okay. And then in 1 Peter 1, another one. 1 Peter 1. And, and you know, Scripture, this is, a, this is really good uh, evidence that Scripture is its own best expositor. It explains itself the best, right? 1 Peter 1, and verse 19 and 20. If somebody gets that, go ahead. And... But with the precious blood of Christ, is that the one? Yep. Who was like a pure and perfect lamb. Christ was chosen before the world was made. Yep. And He was manifest in these last times for us. And so He, the, the, the Lamb that was set aside at the foundation was made manifest for us. He was the perfect Lamb without blemish. That's the Passover Lamb. Right? That was every sacrifice of every Lamb. But the Passover Lamb is what that's specifically talking about there in, in context. Um, so, uh, that first one, the Passover, met its antitype, Christ's sacrifice. It was fulfilled to the precise month, day, and hour. Jesus died on what day? He died on the 14th day. 14th of Nisan. Why? Because that's what was predicted. Yeah, He was the Passover. So, God doesn't arbitrarily choosing a day so this is what it may or may not represent, and in fact, it was it was the exact hour. And when you when you study the um, when Christ died, it, it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. That was the t time of the evening sacrifice. So why did they have a morning and an evening sacrifice? Because eventually it would be fulfilled. 
Christ. And so now do we need to make any more morning or evening sacrifices? They're done. Okay? And, uh, um, and in fact, uh, go to uh, Daniel 9. Anyway, the, the 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 seventy weeks prophecy that's in, in Daniel nine. Daniel had the question: What's going to happen to my people? What's going to happen to my city? And what's going to happen to the sanctuary? And uh, God explains what's going to happen to all those, but He explains it in the context of the Messiah coming. Because the, the whole city was to be a city on a hill to point people to who? Christ. The people were supposed to be a, a people, a, a nation of, of priests, right? Mm -hmm. To do what? To people. To preach the word of God. Yeah. And, and uh, so, uh, and, the, and the sanctuary was to be that I would dwell among them, but it was also to be a, a sign, right, of God's presence. It had the, the holy law. It had, had all those elements in there. And that's where all these uh, festivals would take place at. And so the, in that chapter 9 there, uh, when God answered him, he said, 70 weeks you have, right, are, are determined or cut off for your people. There's uh, Out of the 2,300 years, there's 490 of them that are for your people. Okay? That's what he said. And, and, uh, and starting in, in verse 24. So he says, 70 weeks are determined for your people, for your holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Now who is that talking about? Christ. The baptism of Jesus. Well, and it's, it's talking about Jesus. And then he says, now, verse 25, Know therefore and understand from going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until what? Messiah. Messiah the Prince, the Anointed One. There shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks, or 69. And then the street will be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. Um, but after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be what? Okay, and that is... Uh, the language, that's sanctuary language. If you did not uh, participate in the Day of Atonement and uh, 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 remove all the leaven from your house and all that stuff, right? And you didn't, you didn't make it, make it right with your with with God. What happened to you? You were cut off. You were cut off. Well, Messiah was cut off. Is it because of something he did? No. And look what it says here. Messiah was cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it will be of the flood till the end of the war. Desolations are determined. In verse 27, Then he shall confirm a covenant with me for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall do what? Cause the sacrifice of Okay. And on the wing of abomination shall one who makes desolate, even to the consummation which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. So in the middle of the week, that last seven years of that that uh, um, uh, 490 year prophecy, Jesus ministered for three and a half years. In the middle of the week, he was cut off. He died on the cross. And that's when sacrifices what? Ceased. Ceased. Did they quit making sacrifices? No. But sacrifices were done. 
as far as God was concerned. That's what that's talking about. So uh, when number one there says uh, that um, uh, anti-type, you know, uh, type meant it's anti-type. Okay, the type was the lamb dying at Passover. The anti-type was Jesus, who was the lamb that took away the sins of the world, and He's the one that caused all of this to stop. And He and He did it at the precise time that was predicted. Okay, so He dies. And now look at number two on the unleavened bread. Any, any questions on that? What's really going on there? But you can see how it's a fulfillment. And in the early church, Paul understood it, right? And, and it's not coincidental that Jesus died on the 14th of Nisan uh, at Passover. It's because He was the Passover lamb. Uh, number two, unleavened bread. That's the festival of unleavened bread. And sometimes, sometimes in the Bible, when it says, and the Passover was coming near, it's talking about, sometimes it's talking about, you got to know by the context whether it was talking about the actual Passover day or if it was talking about the season of the Passover, which was those three festivals in a row. Sometimes it was inclusive, sometimes it just meant the one, right? If it says they were going to have the Passover meal, what would you assume? It was for the single. It was for the single. But it says, but they came to town for the Passover. For all of the festivals. For for the one, two, three. Okay. And so you gotta kinda and so some in some places they'll say and it was the days of unleavened bread. Well, the day before unleavened bread was what? Passover. So they were they came to town for unleavened bread. They were coming for the Passover, unleavened bread, and the first fruits. Okay? And and you'll read you'll read in the gospels that it was a festival uh, of lights or it was a festival first fruits and so you know that that was one of those days and you see in fact that's how they know Jesus ministered for three and a half years because they were recording the festivals as he ministered and they knew they knew what it was and then so he started in the in the fall and then he ministered all the way to three and a half years later in the spring so, so we can nail it down to the exact moments where he was doing this. Uh, kind of interesting that he started his ministry during tabernacles. Yeah. He tabernacled with us. And so nothing is coincidental in the life of Jesus, right? It was, it was pre-planned, it was choreographed, and, and we, can, we can see how that happened. So unleavened bread, uh, though not expressly named in the New Testament, this feast was part and parcel of the Passover. Uh, that was the type. Uh, the two terms, Passover and unleavened bread, were interchangeable for, for one feast. Leaven was a symbol of sin. Uh, it can also be a symbol of uh, uh, the gospel, right? It's like one place, he says, a little leaven, leaven, leaven's the whole lump. And he says, you need to be like a little bit of leaven in your, in your church. To make it go right, <laughs> and so we need we need a little bit of leaven that way. So watch the context of what I talked about. But typically, leaven was a symbol of sin, and the bread uh, that was devoid of leaven was a symbol of the sinless Savior who rested in the tomb on the Sabbath of Passover weekend, and it was fulfilled on the precise day of the fifteenth of Nisan. If you go back. To the um, uh, Leviticus, it talks about on the 14th day, on the 15th day, on the day after. You know, this is what you do. Okay, and so we just read that First uh, Corinthians 15 or First Corinthians 5, 7 about how Jesus was the Passover. First um, Corinthians 5, 8 also says. I'll read that one too. Um, it says, Therefore, let us keep the feast not with old leaven or with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity.
sincerity and truth. See, those wouldn't make sense to somebody that had no idea about the festival, right? It says, what's all this about leavened bread, unleavened bread? What's the significance? You say, oh, that must be talking about like the Passover and the unleavened bread. And so you look, you look through there, um, and you can you can see what that that symbolizes. And of course, what does the bread symbolize? The body of Christ. Yeah. And and well, Christ is without sin, so he was without leaven, and we're supposed to be that way. Um, all good stuff. Any questions on the on the unleavened bread, where it was a predictive? So Jesus died right when he was supposed to die. He rested when he was supposed to rest, right? Mm -hmm. He was sinless, right? Um, and then number three, first fruits. And it's interesting that that's, that same letter to the Corinthians, in chapter 15, he brings up another festival. Now, the, the people that, that Paul was writing to in Corinth, Corinth, uh, were they necessarily Jewish? Yeah. And so somewhere along the line, these people had to, to be taught some of these things about the festivals, just like we're learning about the festivals now, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and of course, it, it's not... I've got a book that talks about the Jewish festivals and how they keep them and all the different things they do. And... Uh, Sometimes it's uh, um, you know what's the what's the uh, what's the lady that wrote the book on etiquette? Help me. Emily Post. Emily Post, and she had a book on etiquette, and, and uh, I think that was her. And uh, <laughs> I I can remember when I got married uh, as a young person, we had to get the book of etiquette out. And see what what what's the proper etiquette to do this? You know, you send out the announcement, and you send out the invitation, and then you you know and how you seat people, and and, and just it went on and on. Um, when when it comes to these festivals, sometimes the focus is so much on the ritual and the trappings and all that stuff. It had don't get me wrong, it had meaning. But uh, we have to understand that these were shadows that pointed to something. What do they all point to? Christ. Christ. Christ should be the emphasis of everything that we're doing. Um, when we have worship service and we have we have uh, song service, what should be the emphasis? The music? No. Absolutely. What should be the emphasis? Worshiping Christ. Christ through music. Is there a difference? Yes. I can tell you I've seen the difference, and uh, we've had people uh, come and, uh, uh, Aaron Grant, uh, he attended Fountain Springs for several months, and he was even baptized there, and when he, when he came back to, to fellowship with us, and before he was baptized, he said, you know, he said, it's all about the music, and he says they have a little 15 minute sermon, and it's, he says it's more life coaching than anything else. It's, it's you know, how to be a better person. He says there's just there was nothing to it. And so, so as we as we do our worship service, as we do our ritual, you know, if it's about the music, then we've missed it. If it's music that leads people to Christ, is that what we should be doing? Yes. How about when we have uh, our our prayer? Should it be all about the uh, the? Uh, should we do a Gregorian chant and, and and say our prayers in a way that's that's very colorful? Or maybe we should have somebody up there that knows how to lift their hands and talk in a way that da 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 da, da and use a lot of these and a lot of thous. And, and is that what? Should it be about the prayer or should it be about a prayer that? that, that uh, uh, reaches out to Christ. Yeah. 
And so everything from our announcements to our children's story to our special music to our sermons, everything should be focused on Christ. If you've ever had the opportunity to to visit a, a church and it stops being about Christ and it becomes a, like a show, we we missed the point. And for many people in in Jesus' day, in Paul's day, in the Jewish community, it had become about the show. It had become about the show. Most churches today are about the show. And then, and then you go back even farther, and and uh, God says, and what does God say? I think this is in Samuel's day, David's day, Saul's day. Um, Saul, Saul said, we need to get the show on the road. And he says, I'll do the sacrifice. What did Samuel have to say to him? You, you remember, don't you? What did he say? He says, I. He says it's better to uh, obey. <laughs> what does that tell you about the ritual that God's interested in? He's not interested in the ritual itself. He's interested in what we do. And in so, our obedience. What's that? Our obedience. Our obedience. Him. And so he says that would be better to do what you know to do rather than to put on a show Pretending that that you, you you think about God, and him. I really want God's approval for for us to go to battle. Yeah, he he's going through the motions because he wanted he wanted to win the battle, but I don't think it had anything to do with God. And so God said, "This isn't going to bode well for you." And so, in fact, the Holy Spirit let him. And so, so we know that God's not interested in the show. But when we do worship, when we, when we look at these festivals and what they were, they were supposed to connect people with, with a loving God, right? Mm -hmm. They were supposed to point people to, to who? To Jesus. To Jesus. Jesus, yeah. And so number three... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verses 20 to 23. Um, uh, in the, the Old Testament type of the first fruits. And this was the, the commemorative one was when they got into the promised land and they planted their first crop and then when they harvested their first crop, which would have been the barley crop, I believe, uh, when they could not partake of that barley crop until they performed the festival of first fruits. But at the same time, it was uh, about the ministration of Christ. And so what do you think, what part of His ministry, if His sacrifice was one day, His burial and his rest was the second day, right? What would the third day of that festival be, the first fruits? What would that represent? The resurrection. The first fruits. And so that harvest was 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 new. Um, and so it was a a symbol of the harvest to come, of which Christ was the what? First fruit. First fruit. So verse 20 there in 1 Corinthians 15 says, but now, um, you know, I, I use these, um, uh, this whole chapter is about um, uh, Christ being raised. And, and, and uh, um, what does it say? Look at verse uh, da, 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 uh, 17. 16 and 17. It says, For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is what? In vain. And you're still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. In this life only we have hope in Christ that we are all men of, of, of we are of all men the most pitiful. But 
now Christ is what? Risen from the dead. Risen from the dead and has become the? the first fruits of them that slept. Okay. So Christ was a symbol of the, of the resurrective power of God. You think of all the believers of all the ages, 4,000 years prior to Christ, that have fallen asleep in faith. How many of those guys were resurrected, by the way? Just the ones that his... Well, no, before, before Jesus was resurrected. Just Moses. Moses. No. Moses. There was the little boy, but he died again. Right? Yeah. There was there was a couple of, there there's probably a couple that were resurrected but they all they, they died again. Mm -hmm. And then there's that little resurrection at, around Christ's death and stuff, right? Because they were witnessing and, and whatnot. But Christ was the first first fruit of all those who had died. Mm -hmm. Now, when pastor goes and does a funeral, what can he say? That if they're asleep in Christ. If they're asleep in Christ, then what? They will rise. That's the second kind. Then we have a hope. That's that's part of the good news. And so the festival, think of that festival. Instead of it being harvest of the the, the in the new in the promised land and you have to wave the sheath before you can and it has to be accepted and, and all that stuff. That was symbolic of Christ the high priest waving his wave sheath a small harvest of what was promising a great harvest has there been lots and lots and lots of graves opened up yet no. so a pastor preaches his at his funeral sermons there's coming the harvest yeah. when the dead in Christ will rise first right and we who remain in our life and remains will be caught up together, will be changed, caught up together. And so, so we can preach that because Christ was the first group, and He presented that that wave sheet, and that's probably that resurrection and Christ's. That's probably what He presented in heaven. That's kind of awesome to think about. He says, there's this resurrective power that I have, and this is a promise of what's to come. He says, I have the power to open up the graves. And, and I, you, you think of that whole, that whole uh, Passover uh, time when, the, when, they, when they were crucifying Him and all the stuff that happened. Think of all the witnesses they had to deny to do what they did. Do you suppose it's going to be much different at the end of time? No. You think there'll be people denying the witnesses that are right in front of them? Mm -hmm. be plenty of them. Because they're caught up in the uh, the, the temporal. The the the, the, uh, the physical part of the of the uh, uh, festivals, the physical part of, of, of worship. They're they're caught up and enamored with the, the things that are going on. Our worship has to be much deeper than an enjoyment of, of spiritual music. Does that mean that spiritual music can't be enjoyable? No. But, but if it's not reaching into the places that it needs to reach and, and, and affecting the change that it should affect, then it's just that. It's of no effect. Just like he says here, if the dead don't rise, then what? There's no hope. Then Jesus didn't rise, and if Jesus didn't rise, then your faith is futile. If, if the music you listen to isn't changing your life for the better, guess what? You should, probably shouldn't be listening. If the prayers that you pray and, and the, the services that you participate in, and you know, see, see what I'm saying? The, the messages that you hear, if they're, not, if they're not building you up and edifying you in there, if they're not uh, uh, 
cutting to the to the bone, to the marrow, and changing the way that you look at life. If they're not changing the way and that you and I interact, if I can claim to be a Christian, Rhonda, and just blow you off, or or heaven forbid, mistreat you. There's something wrong with my my religion, isn't there? Yes. And I worship him in vain. And I worship a dead Christ. That's kind of sobering, right? Mm -hmm. Because because when I go home at night tonight, when I go home at night and and I get ready for bed and I'm down on my knees and I'm and I'm praying. What kind of things am I praying about? God, help me have an easier day tomorrow. Um, what what kind of things should... What happened to you today? The different things that went through. The people that you've met. People. You should be praying for what happened to people that you've met. Strangers. Yeah, I need to give more of my heart to Him. And I need to confess more of my faults to him and say, you know, root these out. Um, Every day he gives you an example of something you should give up. You know, we uh, we focus so much, and Ellen White puts it this way, it's like we pick on the leaves of the tree mm -hmm. and they just come back. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen is pastor doesn't need to pick on the leaves on this tree, does he? No. He needs an axe to the root. In fact, in fact, to continue that analogy, I need a new tree. <laughs> if I'm going to get different fruit, what do I need? Cut down, cut down the tree and <laughs> put a branch in the vine. Right. Exactly. There you go. And it's going to it's going to bear different fruit, right? Yes. Because Hopefully. it's 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 a different root. in trouble when we navel gaze and we, we worry about it. And sometimes we can be, can, can we be a critical bunch of yes, us we can. Christians? <laughs> yes. But not us Adventists. So we're never. Oh, oh, yes we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, let me ask the question this way. Is there enough criticism in my life that I should I shouldn't even worry about Janet or Scott over there. Should, is there enough for me to criticize in my own? Life? Yes. Yeah. We need to worry about our own. Life. Yes, we do. And, and to quote Ellen White again, she says, "Tend your own garden." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to do. <laughs> but it's 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 sometimes it's way funner mm -hmm. and it's and it's way more interesting to get into other people's business. Correct. But but you look at how deep these festivals should have taken people. And they should have pointed them to a Messiah that... that uh, do you understand? Do you understand that Jesus died because of you? Because of your sins. If He didn't cover my sins. Uh, lost. Uh, what? Why does he want to cover your sins? Because he loves me and wants me to work. He said, "Amen." Each individual. And so, so the festivals and the sanctuary and the sacrifices and all those lambs and all all that stuff pointed to to that idea. Uh, this last week, I was was in my devotion studying on the, the cross. And Ellen White tells us that we would do well if every day we dwelt on the sacrifice that went on the cross. I, I ran ran across some articles, and, and I was asking the question. You know, uh, uh, people people think that they're abused, they're misused. Did did Christ take any abuse? Oh my God! <coughs> 
more than any person walking on earth. As I was as I was studying that, um, this this little gal on the news, Gabby <coughs> Petito. What's that? What's that? Is that like an Italian name, Petito? Yeah. I wonder if that means like small or whatever. But. <coughs> What's that? I thought Billy mm -hmm. Bob knew. <laughs> she is trying to give me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> any, anyway, I just I'm fascinated. Uh, and, and then this guy named Laundry, he's trying to he's trying to make it look different than his. He's to clean his laundry. But it's coming out that, that they had an abusive relationship. Um, and that got me thinking more. Um, these these uh, children that are, that are being trafficked across our border, are they experiencing abuse? Yeah. Or, and some of them will be used, abused, and then They're thrown away. Uh, they, they they won't live to see adulthood. No, it's horrible what they do. Uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but unreported are uh, uh, Native American girls that are missing. Oh, yeah. They're not reported. Twenty four of them in this county. Well, in Wyoming. But that's just in Pennington County. What what's happened? What's happened? To well, the, did you listen to the news tonight about that? Look, what, yeah, well, it's, it's being white brought girl, to the surface because of a blonde girl. You yeah, know. one white girl. What happened to her over in Wyoming? Okay, she was murdered. What's happened to the 24 that are missing? That are Native American. They never said a word about any of them. They never. Advocates. They are. Which I kind of think they are getting some advocates out there and using the yeah. media, like you know, because. Well, it, it, it heightens awareness, and it'll be it it'll be there for a while. All our precious inside. Yeah. So, so I was thinking about the abuse that goes on every single day. As a pastor, I've seen it. It's horrible. I, I've seen I've seen these these petite young ladies with black eyes and bloody lips and missing teeth, and uh, it just makes me furious. And so I got to thinking about Jesus and his experience on the cross. When, when he was stripped naked, uh, is there anybody that would volunteer to go to the town square and to be stripped naked? No. Would that be humiliating at all? When the Romans, that was part of the torture. This is part of the torture. And this is what I found in my, in my research. So part of the torture was sexual abuse. Not just humiliation. Because there's people who are humiliated right. in a sexual way all the time. But part of it was, you know, um, this, this young man that I've been watching his trial and, and uh, they, the jury found him guilty. Now he's going to appeal, I think. I think. I don't know. Anyway, so he'll go to jail for 30 years. Guess what his biggest fear is when he goes to jail? No less Yeah. And, and so part of the humiliation was to sexually abuse these prisoners and use them any way that you want to use them because they are no longer human beings. Can Jesus sympathize with these young girls? Yes, he can. And these little boys that are abused and humiliated and shamed. I was watching the testimony of a, of a young gal, and you, you're all familiar with the Hillsong group or whatever. 
they started over in Australia and they've got a 30 or 40 churches over there. But anyway, uh, one of the one of the pastors uh, had sexually abused a, a teenage girl. They kind of swept it under the rug. And then there was another teenage girl, underage. She was helping stack chairs after a meeting and stuff. And everybody else went home and one of the staff there um, locked the door, turned the lights off, and, and raped her. And when she was given her testimony, of course, it was it, this had been a couple years in between, and she was just shaking. She couldn't hardly tell the story. And it shocked me. She said, I thought it was my fault. And that was a pastor that did that? A staff, a staff on the church. I think he staff. was he was just a, a youth helper. Mm -hmm. But but it, it, it's you know, how terrible is it when it happens, but how much more terrible is it when it's a, a, a religious organization that claims to be Christ. And you know, uh, connecting people with Christ and that kind of thing's happen. And, and we're a fallen race of beings and stuff. But, but but my point is is that when you dwell on the cross and the sacrifice and the things that Jesus went through for me and and how how it uh, he, he spanned the uh, the uh, uh, spectrum of, of uh, things that we experience Humanity and the crimes of humanity against humanity. <clears throat> he experienced it all, and it's like, why in the world would anybody want to, on purpose, go through that? Nobody would, mm -hmm. except one. Christ went through it for each of us. Well, considering what he went through, I yeah. just said then had to go through all that, it would kill anyone. Well, and he was turned over to the demonic forces mm -hmm. that we as human beings allow to control us. Yeah. And it's so dark. It's so dark. How 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 badly do we need Christ? Mm -hmm. And and how and how uh, how uh, completely do we need to understand what's going on with these festivals and what they're trying to portray and what they're trying to move us towards mm -hmm. that they're much more than just the, uh, uh, the, the the trappings around it it's 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 to bring us to a place where where there's a broken um, heart that we need to have as we approach there you go, or, or, be, or be crushed beneath it. Um, so, so when we're when we're studying these things, it's nice to know the information and the symbology and all that stuff. But we need to to understand that this was an actual flesh and blood walk in the face of the earth. That was the God Man that emptied himself of all of his privilege and came down and suffered what you and I ought to be suffering. He suffered what some of us will suffer, but then he suffered it to the nth degree. Uh, that that Roman cross was an instrument of torture. In the news today, there was a guy that tortured a, a, a boy with a sledgehammer before he killed him. A little twelve-year-old. Twelve-year-old stole some money from his wallet. See, and that makes me wonder how, I don't know how God can even see this stuff because we hear about it, like what you just said, a sledgehammer, but God sees it. He actually sees it. it I would throw up. I mean, I would bawl. I think, I think I he is. I just, that's where I, oh, it, Where's Where's our compassion? And, and we're told at the end of time, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to grow cold. We're not going to have it like we should. 
And, and well, look when, at people today. They see something like that happening, and they just walk on by. They don't even report it. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, it's sickening what some people will watch and not report it. Yeah. Well, and, and as a pastor, I'm, and as a, as a health care worker, you know, you're mandatory reporters and, yeah. and stuff. And so you see that kind of stuff. It's like, dude, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Try to put an end to it, but but we're gonna we're gonna come upon a time when it's gonna be so bad that that uh, like you said it, it makes you, it just makes you literally sick to your stomach yes. what's going on and uh, uh, the things that are going on and the news the news hypes it up because it's it, it gets some clicks or gets some views or or, or whatever yes. but at the at the at the root of all that is actual people who are suffering. And, and uh, you know, and this little gal that disappeared, and then they found her. And all stuff. There's parents and families, and there's there's you know, like like you were saying, there's twenty some other ones that are missing. It's like, what about them? What, what does anybody care? And 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 God does care. He says, I'm going to put an end to this. This is it ought not be this way. And so. We can we can look back in our Old Testament when God says, you know, um, uh, annihilate them. When you go in there, annihilate them, because this is the kind of things they do. They they, they sacrifice their children and they burn them alive. That's what their religion does. Is they think so little of human life that they will take a child and roast him to death. And he says, that has to stop. Has to. And so he sees the, the crime. And so he knows he's keeping track. And, and, and what did Jesus say about hurting a child? Mm -hmm. You would have been better off if a millstone was hung around your neck. Because when, when you know, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when he pours out his vengeance without mercy, you know, when you think about what they did to Jesus on the, you know, how they just beat him, and, and you know, when you ponder it, it it's, yeah, it, it just really gets, it gets to me, you know, <clears throat> like, he didn't do anything wrong, and yet he took every beating, and, and, and so he was wrongfully accused. Mm -hmm. He was completely innocent of anything, and he was punished for something he did not deserve. And that's and that and what and what's so hard to comprehend or put your your mind around is that he suffered what I deserve to give me what I don't. Right. He left what he obviously deserve to come down here and participate in what and to save us. I mean that's mm -hmm. love. And, and so and so that's the picture that he's trying to paint with the festivals. And so that's my long way around that. We'll we'll pray and then we'll continue. stay by me. Uh, dear Jesus, uh, we have talked about your sacrifice and we look at these festivals and and how they're just rife with meaning. They they just pulsate with, with love and with grace and with mercy. Uh, Lord, we look at what humanity can do to humanity and we are appalled. And we wonder how long this can go on and you say, not long. Uh, in Revelation chapter 6, uh, we, we read how uh, the people that lost their lives because they loved you, they say, how long until you avenge our blood? And you say, just a little while. The next thing we know, you're coming. And so, Lord, we long for that day. And until that day, Lord, keep us uh, in your heart. Keep us in your love. And may we somehow, some way, project a, a loving God to our family, our loved ones, our friends, this church, this community that you have placed us in. Lord, we are here for a purpose, and that is to show your love to others. 
may we do that uh, wholeheartedly and completely. That's our prayer in Jesus' name.